since I did my last Anime Holy Grails video, pretty much most of the works on that list have been licensed in some form or another, so it is time to revisit the list. Evangelion is available on Netflix and has received some very nice Blu-ray releases, one of which I've even done an unboxing video of. The City Hunter franchise, almost in its entirety, has received some excellent releases on Blu-ray from Discotech Media, as have the various elements of the Gao Gai Gar saga. The rest of the Brave franchise, particularly Mike Gain, hasn't been licensed yet, but hopefully the success of Gao Gai Gar will get the foot in the door for the other parts of the Brave franchise. While Macross slipped back into limbo after potentially being straightened out due to Sean Kleckner taking a long-deserved retirement accompanied by a presumably Brink's truck full of money from Sony Crunchyroll, the releases of Macross 7 and other releases aren't off the table yet, but things are looking positive, particularly with also streaming rights having been somewhat straightened out with Disney Plus, or not somewhat, but brought up with Disney Plus. The main remaining works from my list of anime holy grails are Zambot 3 and Angel's Egg. Now, Yoshitaka Amano mentioned during his pre-COVID Kamoricon appearance that the rights to Angel's Egg can be best be described as being in limbo, if not FUBAR, but recent developments have pointed towards an upgrade, upcoming 4K remaster of Angel's Egg supervised by um, the director, Mamoru Oshii himself, and hopefully with it, a release by G-Kids, but as of this recording, there is no date or other announcement of an actual physical media release as yet, just possibly a um, international distribution of a theatrical release of the film, which is kind of where we were at before. The Sandbot 3, sadly, remains off the table. With that in mind, here are my four picks for works to replace those that have already been relicensed and are now been have now been made available again. I now I want to get these picks out now. It's I've let the, the blog post version of this sit for a while to give things a chance to get released, but we haven't had a discotheque day announced yet since um this went up. Or the, like we had one yeah no no we haven't we haven't had a discotheque day since the blog post went up. And we've had no additional announcements from this yet. So now seems to be the good time in advance of any discotheque licensing panels or videos or anything like that. Number one, the rest of Lodos, Rune Soldier Louie, and the Legend of Christania, plus the manga and novels. There was a chunk of time when we were getting a steady clip of Lodos. Funimation licensed rescued the original anime and television series, and Seven Seas published the first Lodos novel officially in English both in a regular paperback, a digital edition, and a very nice hardbound edition, which is the one that I purchased. And then things stopped. No more translation of the novels, no re-release of the manga, no licensed rescues of the other series, Legend of Christania and Rune Soldier Louie, both of which had come out in the United States in the past. Seven Seas has since said that they have no plans to release the remaining Lotus novels in English, and we should stop asking. But I... Could not find any reason as to why. Not because it wasn't selling well enough or difficulty of getting translation clearances from Group SNE, nothing. I truly hope these remaining portions of the Lodos saga will eventually get an official English language US release. Not only the parts of the Lodos saga that have been animated, but hopefully the rest of the novels, possibly picked up by somebody like J Novel Club and the previous manga releases like um, Lady of Ferris which have previously received English language releases, as those mangas, manga volumes, tend to go for fairly high prices. Hopefully, Udon's release of Crown of the Covenant will show that there is, in fact, enough of a market for Lodos to support more releases of work in this universe. Additionally, with the success of various Japanese tabletop role-playing games, um, such as the and with like upcoming titles as of this recording, like the Shin Megami Tensei and uh, Final Fantasy XIV tabletop role-playing games. Hopefully this will show that there is a market that we will eventually get a release of Sword World, pro probably the most recent edition, 2.5, into English. Number two, Fang of the Sun, Dugram. When I was getting into tabletop RPGs and learned about Battletech, with this came learning about The Unseen, a collection of mechs that were 
based on licensed designs from various anime that Vasa had gotten, or rather thought they'd gotten, in a licensing deal with model manufacturer 20th Century Imports. These designs came from three shows. Macross with the Destroids, which is where Vasa got in trouble, Crusher Joe, and Fang of the Sun, Dugram. As my fandom grew, I ended up researching Dugram further and learned about Ryosuke Takahashi and one of his other series, Armored Trooper Votoms, and with it, Takahashi's philosophy of the real robot. While Gundam and other similar series still keep the concept of the giant robot as being the sort of high-performance ace custom, Takahashi's interpretation places the real robot as being just a tool or other implement of war, like a jeep or a machine gun, with the mystique ultimately falling behind not the implement itself, but who uses it. Dugram, I feel, was the first major step in this direction, I think, for Takahashi, and one that did so without going through to the large, <clears throat> larger extremes of scope that Votoms did with the mystique of the warrior, with the whole concept of the red shoulders and perfect soldier, great feeling like Takahashi was trying to create his own universe's version of the Kizats Hadarak, only created strictly for battle rather than to lead humanity. It's still meant to be something of a deconstruction of that archetype, as was is the case with Dune, but still kind of in that general line. Consequently, the absence of those elements, in a way, makes Dugram feel more grounded in a manner that Votoms isn't. Because while Votoms, again, in that series, the, ro the robot is as expendable and disposable as a jeep or a gun in an action movie, having the larger elements around, like the more mythic elements around it, makes the series... On the one hand, bigger, which is nice, but on the other hand, perhaps makes it makes all of the humans just a little bit, not so much smaller, but it takes away a bit from the groundedness of the setting. Number three, Master Keaton. In 2023, the anime adaptations of the works of Naoki Urasawa have gotten new life, with Netflix putting up Monster for Streaming in advance of the anime adaptation of Pluto, which came out um, not too much longer afterwards. With Pluto being Urasawa's own interpretation of Tezuka's Astro Boy story, The World's Strongest, where he took that story and put it into the framework of the mystery thriller stories that he's become known for through those works along with 20th Century Boys. Now, if you read my writ review of the manga of Master Keaton on my blog, the manga feels like it lays a lot of the groundwork of what would come later with Monster, not just in terms of Urasawa as a writer of mysteries, but also in terms of Urasawa developing his own background on Europe in the late 80s and early 90s, as the Iron Curtain came down in various countries that had been under the yoke of the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact tried to figure out where they were going to do now under this new geopolitical structure, with the separation of Czechoslovakia into the Czech Republic and Slovakia, for example. While I would love to also see a physical release for Monster, in addition to hopefully getting something for Pluto, I suspect the release of Master Keaton in a way may be more likely. Um, partially because of length, partially because Netflix is not necessarily consistent about physical releases for shows they've licensed. And also, since Master Keaton isn't available for streaming while Monster is, I feel like Master Keaton is almost a more pressing concern. Number four, Better Man. Of all the parts in the ga of the Gal Gadgar universe, the black shape of the setting is Better Man, a combination mecha, dark transforming hero action horror series that operates on the fringes of the setting, with the cast eventually slipping into the Gal Gadgar story through parts of Gal Gadgar Final and a sequel novel, part of which got incorporated into Super Robot Wars 30. Now, Better Man is also a series I watched semi-religiously on Tech TV back in the day when they had a limited anime block, which also included Serial Experiments Lane, and which I tried and sadly failed to tape when I was not able to watch it live. It was the first mecha horror show that I'd watched, though it was the intense on the scares, and I enjoyed it tremendously. I'd love to see Better Man made available again. The last mention I've heard was that Sentai Filmworks had licensed it, 
but that announcement also mentioned they'd licensed Overman King Gainer and Murakami, both of which were later, and by later, I mean after that announcement, but also before this video was made, got releases from Discotech Media. So consequently, the rights for Better Man might be available again. And as Discotech has released the rest of the Gal Gadgar saga, they, it feels like they're in the best position to pick up the series. So, as things stand, my list of anime holy grails is now Sambot 3, Angel's Egg, Better Man, Master Keaton, Bang of the Sun, Dugram, and the rest of Lotus. What other things would you consider to be on your own list of anime holy grails for licensed rescue? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.